Welcome to our lecture online. Now let's take a look at our third type of three-wire, three-phase circuit. It's called a balanced delta-delta circuit. And notice that both the source and the load are in the delta configuration. We still have our line currents IA, IB, and IC. We still have our phase currents IAB, IBC, and ICA. But now they're fed by a delta circuit, a delta source circuit. And so how does that make a difference? Well, it turns out that we have a voltage between A and B, a voltage between B and C, and a voltage between C and A. Those voltages are called the line voltages. And it turns out those are the same as the phase voltages and have the same phase angle. So there's no difference in a circuit like this between the line voltages and the phase voltages. So we can simply say that VAB is equal to VAB here. In other words, the voltage across each of the three branches of your delta circuit here is equal to the voltages across the three branches of your load circuit and that the magnitude of the line voltages is equal to the magnitude of the phase voltages and they have the same phase angle so they're exactly the same there's no difference between the phase and the line voltage in a delta delta circuit however on the load side we still have the line currents and the phase currents and those are exactly the same as the line and the phase currents of a y delta circuit because the load is exactly the same as a y delta circuit in a delta delta circuit and so what we can say is that there's still the same relationship between the line current and the phase current the line current is larger than the phase current by a factor of the square root of three and we know that the line current lags the phase current by an angle of 30 degrees so that's exactly the same we also find the phase currents iab ibc and ica in the very same way as we did with a y delta circuit it is the voltage across each of the three legs or branches of the delta circuit divided by the impedance of the load and again the impedance of the load has to be the same across all three branches because it's a balanced load and so we take VAB divided by the, the, the impedance VBC divided by the impedance and VCA, the VCA divided by the impedance to find the three phase currents and then to find the line current all we have to do is multiply the magnitude of the phase currents by the square root of three and subtract an angle of 30 degrees from whatever the phase is of those three phase currents. Also, we can relate the line current and the phase currents by using Kirchhoff's current rule. We can take any of the three branch points, for example, branch point A, we can see that the currents going into that branch point are IA and ICA, and leaving the branch point is IAB. So we can say that IA plus ICA, which are the two currents entering the branch point equal IAB, which is the current leaving the branch point. Solving that for IA, we get IAB minus ICA as being equal to the line current IA. Another way of looking at it is you can say that IA must be equal to IB minus the additional current provided for by ICA. So IA can be written as IAB minus ICA, which is what we have over here. In the same way, we can say that IB, the line current IB, is equal to BC minus the portion contributed by AB. So we can say that IB is equal to IBC minus IAB. And the line current IC is equal to the current ICA minus the portion contributed by BC. So we can write that IC is equal to ICA minus IBC. So that's how you can summarize the relationship between the phase and the phase voltages and the line voltages and the phase currents and the line currents in a delta-delta circuit. And that's how it's done.